See if it connects up for a change. Is it working? Whoa, I think it is working. Might be a little bit slow though. Oh, it's not even that slow. <gasps> this is great. This is so great. I think the the Streamlabs updated the YouTube algorithm, so now it is not as laggy as before. Also, you can have all the chat stuff in Streamlabs now. So, oh my yes. Happy Thanksgiving to you guys. Um, okay, we're going to talk about portfolio stuff tonight, but we're, I'm a little bit early, 13 minutes early to be exact. Where'd my pen go? Um, shoot, how did I just lose it? Where did you go? Where did you go? I just had my pen. Oh, there it is. Found it. Um, yeah, we're gonna talk about portfolios tonight. But in the meantime, let me set up. Turn this bad boy on. Oh, man, tip stream, episode 32. Portfolio Plus Ultra. Uh, I'm going to make some food real quickly because I'm hungry, but. Sweet, sweet. Uh, desktop. Okay, um, I'll be back in a hot second. What's up, William? What's up, Min Maze? Give me one second. I'm just checking everything. Oh my god. <sighs> Having to pull up stuff. This is sick. I'm really happy that the Streamlabs updated their their YouTube part of it. So now it's not as laggy. Now it actually like brings up a lot of the normal interface stuff that I didn't have before. I'm pretty psyched about that. Do people upload stuff today? Caleb Carr, 19, 19, 10. Nope, doesn't look like I want to upload things. Just fine. Just delete that. Um. Okay, if you guys have any, howdy, Ocelifera. If you guys have your portfolio, put it up in the chat, link it up in the chat, and then I'll just go chronologically. Paste. Uh, can you guys paste links? If you can't paste the link, just um, create like a, make it so it's not a hyperlink. You know how I do with my HTTPS stuff? Just break it up so it doesn't create a hyperlink. Paste or URL in the chat. Or you can send it to me through an email. Or you can send it to me through an email at dmand.art at gmail.com. Okay, I'll be back in a second.
<laughs> that was very Cool. Go, 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 go. Yeah, I don't think the hyperlink worked. So, um, what you did was good, Mindy. I can see it that way. Sick. Nice. There you go. Cool. Cool.
cool, 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 cool. Oh, shoot, I closed it. <clears throat> All right, sick. Mm. How are you guys doing tonight? What is going on with you guys? You guys doing anything exciting for Thanksgiving? And Just chilling with family and trying to get some good drawing done. That sounds great. Hopefully nothing too crazy. Hopefully your family isn't too crazy or anything. So you'll have a nice um, relaxing conversation. No political stuff. Or, or maybe that's what you're into. I don't know. Like, could be both. Actually, let's make this presentation. Cool, 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 cool. Um, are you guys excited about any specific foods for dinner, for Thanksgiving? I feel like everyone's always excited about the turkey, but I'm not a big turkey fan myself, so. Can't say I can't say I'm on the turkey train. I am on the gravy train. I do like the gravy. That's always good. Sala Ferro says, hype for pumpkin pie. Ooh, pumpkin pie does sound good. Do you make your own pumpkin pie or do you buy? Uh, Minmay says, might do hot pot or steak. Haven't decided yet. Whoa, two different ones. Oh, nice. Okay, so it's eight o'clock already. Hmm. Mm -mm -mm. Let me get a finished bite and tweet about it, and then we're good. Everything's so crazy. The traffic was so crazy today because of Thanksgiving. It was pretty nuts. There's just so many people on the road. So many crazy drivers like switching lanes and not knowing how to merge and driving slow. <sighs> Holidays, am I right? 
Okay, cool, cool, cool. <laughs> Ocella Ferro says, steak is galaxy brain. This year we're trying to make pumpkin pie on our own. Oh, yeah, go for it. So it could go terrible, could go fantastic. I feel like pumpkin pie is pretty, um, pretty lenient. Uh, you just need to, because it's like the pumpkin pie filling you get in a can unless you're doing it. Unless you're doing it yourself, and then that makes it a little bit more challenging. But if it's in the can, that's pretty good already. Then all you have to really worry about is the crust. But you can also buy the crust if you want. So depends on how much you're doing yourself. But I feel like that is a little bit more forgiving compared to maybe like a uh, maybe like a cobbler or something where it's it's a little bit more complicated. But tell me how it goes. Take pictures. In the meantime, we're going to start with our joke. What does Jack's mother wear on her legs? What does Jack's mother wear on her legs? She wears bean stockings. Get it? Bean stockings. <laughs> okay. Well, oh, let me turn this part off a little bit. You guys are here today because we are talking about portfolios today. There is a CTN, CTN just happened and hopefully everyone was able to go to it or at least um talk to people there and whatnot i don't know i i don't really go to c10 all that much so i'm not sure if it's beneficial for people i did hear there they were charging for portfolio reviews and i thought that was kind of ridiculous considering that i think it was like a hundred dollars or something can you guys confirm that if you're in the chat if you went to ctn if you got your portfolio reviewed or whatnot I uh, I heard you had to actually submit your portfolio ahead of time for it to get reviewed, which I also thought was a little interesting, but you know, maybe that's a good thing. Maybe if you submit early and then they can tell you if they'll have time for you or not, it's better than buying a ticket and flying out. Anyways, I think this is a topic that we've spoken on before and I think portfolios, I, I have no problem talking about it again because I think the portfolio is kind of like a first date. You... You're trying to wow your date and you don't have too many opportunities and you know it's one part like what you look and one part substance and so in a lot of ways a portfolio a portfolio can be very make or break in a lot of times right so let's talk about portfolios if you guys have any questions or any comments post them up in the chat if you have your portfolio you want to get reviewed uh, post that up in the chat. If it's a hyperlink, just break up the hyperlink like Mindy Chow did. Uh, just put like the www's and the dot coms separately so it doesn't hyperlink to it. Otherwise, the chat won't recognize it uh, due to like the spamming. It prevents it from people spamming hyper or hyperlinks because there are so many bots before. Uh, but yeah, post it up in the chat. If you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, do that. Smash that subscribe button. <laughs> Hit the like icon. Oh, uh, you know what to do. I'm not, I don't like, it feels weird like selling myself like that. But I guess I have to remind people to to do that. Um, I'm almost at a thousand subscribers, which is pretty cool. Uh, after a thousand, I'll be able to stream from my phone. So, you know, I can just walk around talking about storyboards all the time. Um, but yeah, post your stuff up in the chat. Uh, William says, I went last year, skipped it this year. I like Lightbox better. Okay, well, what do you like about Lightbox better? Uh, send, Minmay says the same. Minmay says, last year you have to pay to have a lottery to be chosen to get a portfolio review at CTN. Oh my goodness. That is intense. Mr. Miguel says, wish I could have gone this year, mostly to see some friends that were tabling. And Afrati says, oh my God, how exciting. Cool. It sounds like there are a little bit mixed reviews on CTN. A lot of people that were tabling that new said it was kind of dead. Um, just because I think maybe Lightbox took some of their took some of their crowd, rightfully so I think. Um, but that's a whole other conversation. Anyways, let's talk about portfolios. So, like I said, portfolios are kind of like a first date type situation. You're trying to wow the recruiter, and part of it is presentation, how you present your work, and then the second part is also content, what work you're actually presenting. So, in terms of storyboards, because that's why I know best, we'll talk about storyboards. And the best way to think about it is in two parts. The first part will be presentation where I talk about your website should have your job clearly defined, easily at the top, like storyboard, artist, director, 
character designer, et cetera, et cetera. It should be somewhere on your website so people know what you're doing. Um, secondly, on that same homepage that you send them to should be your contact info because you want them to easily be con easily contact you, right? If they get to there and they like your work, they shouldn't have to click to your about page or your resume stuff. Just have your email up at the top, have your name next to it. And then third, your work should be easily accessible from your home page. You don't want them to have to click to another page, right? When they just getting them to, to look at your page the first time is already a huge leap. Asking them to click around even more and more just makes it harder. So have it be accessible from the home page. Have them just already be able to start tabbing through your storyboards. And that's that's kind of a general overview for a presentation. Make your job title very clear, make your work easily accessible, and make your contact information easily accessible. Does that make sense? Let's take a look at some examples. Oh. So Mindy Chow was nice enough to post her stuff up into the the chat. And so this is her story board, her portfolio. And I, I like it already, right? So we have her name, who she is, we have the job description, and then we have some tabs to show what she's she does. Storyboards, miscellaneous beat for resume about. That's great. That's all great. Her work is here at the start. You can click on any one of these. And then at the bottom it has all the contact information. This is perfect. This is so good because you have everything that's important to the recruiter right on the home page. You don't have to click around anywhere. If they want to know more, like let's say what her resume is, we can click to it. But that's only if the recruiter wants to do that. Everything, all the important information is already there. So you don't have to search for it. So like you can click on the storyboard and then download the PDF or use the, the in-browser player, which is great too, right? This is perfect. You give them a couple of different options because sometimes people, at least for storyboards, sometimes it's hard for the recruiter to actually access the storyboards because a lot of times it's hundreds of pages or at least hundreds of panels. So I always give the option to download a PDF just in case it's easier. That way they can tap through it or just in case the, the web plugin doesn't work for them. Everyone has different web browsers, different phones, different computers. So sometimes the that doesn't work, so give them a second option. Give them the PDF option, right? Uh, Clock Rocker Green says, finally made it to the stream. Hey, thanks for coming out. Been three years, so you think? Afrodi says, so you think having a homepage with a lot of things going on is bad if you have one boards, two character design, three BG paintings? Okay, so this is something that comes up a lot. And um, I would say if you are applying for a storyboard position, only show them storyboards. Don't show them backgrounds, don't show them character design. If you want to apply for each job, have each job in a different website, right? So if you're doing character designs, have a website only for character design. If you want to do backgrounds, have one only for backgrounds. Don't combine all three together. I think it's when you have, when you go to like a website where, Let's say we're going to a website that says Dwu, and then underneath it has story, character, and like prop, let's say props, right? This is not good. This is kind of something that a lot of people do when they first try to break into the industry. They're just like, oh, just I just want any job, right? But the thing you need to realize is that one, there's no company that is just going to hire you for all three of those skills. They'll hire you to do one thing very good, but they won't hire you to do three things mediocrely, right? So already this is kind of like working against you. It kind of, it kind of is a student type thing or a mistake that a lot of students make. So if you really want to do characters or props, just make a second website. That's just Dwu character design. And then the same things apply as storyboards, right? So character design at the top, and then already just have your designs on the home page. Have your turns here. Have another one down here, right? Like so, you have your you have your character turns, 
maybe the thing about character design that a lot of people don't know is that you're going to be turning a character a lot and that is important to show that you can do that i think a lot of people have this misconception that character design is just designing cool characters and doing expressions for them that's important and they'll look at your style for that and it'll play a part in hiring you but a big part of it is also a technical skill of being able to turn these characters and design them for animation so in the same way that we had the storyboard stuff character design a character design web website is similar or character design portfolio is very similar and you should have your information up here somewhere right like dwooman dot art at gmail.com so separate out your different job or separate out your different portfolios from each other have story have character have props um Mimi says, would separate tabs be okay instead of different websites and link tabs directly for each type of job instead of the homepage? And Kenny says, good evening. Good evening to you too. I would say, I would just say different websites personally, because if you have tabs like this on your homepage, it makes it confusing. Uh, if you're thinking about just sending them the, the link directly to one of these pages, I guess that could work. I think honestly, um, the way at least most domains work is you buy the domain and then you can create pages and you don't necessarily have to link them all to the same place. Also, I think a URL is kind of cheap now, isn't it? Like $10 a year. I think it's $10 a year or something like that to have the URL. So if you just buy the dom if you buy the the website space and just have the URL, connect the URL to that, it could work that way. Um, I guess you could have different tab. You could send them directly to that one, but it's as long as you have this, this idea that it's just when you get to the page, you automatically know what job they're applying for. That's the most important thing, right? You want to make it very clear what you're applying for, what they are looking at your portfolio for, what reason and they want to be able to see your skills very quickly. Um, oh, celebrate! Oh, uh, yeah, I definitely got this going on. I think good to keep in mind to fix that. Um, Bin May says, but that's a good point about not fully linking the pages. Yeah, I think again. Okay, so talking to my my buddy Natasha, she had to look through two hundred portfolios. Two hundred portfolios. And she said a lot of the times she would get to a portfolio website and she wouldn't know what they were applying for. They would have too many things going on or she would try to click through it and wouldn't click through or they just didn't have like, it, it wasn't organized. So she had to like click around on different tabs. Well, maybe for the first couple she went through them, but over time it's like you don't really have time to investigate each person completely. Sometimes they would even not have a website and just send PDFs. And so that's fine, but they wouldn't include their contact information, right? So if you think about just, if you think about it in terms of dating, again, I think dating is a perfect metaphor because let's say you're dating one person, right? And you, you know that you want someone that likes dogs, you know that they have to be um, employed and they have to, like have 10, 11 fingers. They need to have 11 fingers, right? So that's your criteria. Well, immediately you're going to open up with, hey, do you like dogs? Hey, are you are you working right now? And show me your hands, right? So those, that's kind of like portfolio as well. It's like, you want to be able to answer those three criteria very quickly, very easily, because if that first person doesn't work out, you're going to go on to the second person, then third person, et cetera, et cetera. And if any one of them is like, well, I don't want to show you my hands. You're like, well, get out of here. I don't have time to waste with your bullshit. I have like 300 other dates I need to go on. So it's it's kind of, you want to make it as streamlined as possible because you're helping out the recruiter. And that'll help your chances. Helping them out helps you out. Um, Okay. Mr. Meguel says, at least with my website, you don't need to have a link bar at the top of every page and they can be formatted differently so you can make three completely different pages with no clicking through. 
Uh, post that up in the chat. I'm very curious to see that too. So post that up. All right. So we're talking about presentation, making it very clear for the recruiter, making it very easy to find. Next, we want to talk about content, right? I think this is something that a lot of people also have questions about because they're not sure as to what to include. In terms of storyboarding, we want to see storyboards. We want to see fully finished storyboards. Finished work. You And this also in terms of finished work is present your best work first, right? So whichever storyboard or character design or prop you think is the best, put that first. So in terms of uh, Mindy Chow's page, this one would be the one that I would expect to be the best, uh, unreasonable. And then second, third, best after that. But definitely put your best work first because most of the time you only have one chance to you know, make a good first impression, right? You're, it's a date. You want to make a good first impression? If they like your first storyboard, then they're more likely to click on the second one. And then the third one, if they really, if they're really into it, and even let's say if your first one is good, but your second one is like mediocre, at least they can kind of gauge your skill level from that. If your third one is kind of like mediocre as well, they'll be like, okay, we can see how far, we can see the quality of our work from like the high to like the lows, right, or maybe to the medium. That way, they have a good idea of your skill. If you only, if you put like your worst work first and then your last your your best one last that doesn't work because that, if they look at your bad work and then they're just like well you're already not good enough so you want to put your best foot forward show your best work first because you want to make that good impression um best work first finished work for storyboards make sure it is a full story or at least like a beginning middle and end you want to show that you can tell a story you want to show that you understand story. You want that will usually help also entertain the person look at. If you can entertain the person look at your portfolio, then that's a good thing because that means they're engaged. That means you're activating something in them and it'll create an impression in them. Just like a first date, you want to leave you want to leave a, a feeling on them, right? It doesn't have to be always comedic work comedic comedy stuff is always great to look at and laugh because that's a very positive feeling but if you have like a good action sequence or if you have a good dramatic sequence those are also equally like impactful so make sure that you have like a beginning middle and end to your work storyboards Uh, Kelly says, can you mention some of the similarities and differences for TV and feature for storyboard portfolio? Uh, okay, so I think the biggest difference between maybe a storyboard portfolio for TV and feature is just the look of it. I think that's a big part of it. Uh, another part of feature boarding that is something that I think Disney does. I'm not sure if DreamWorks says it too, but you actually have to pitch a storyboard for them. And so you have to come up with an original idea and then pitch it to them. You can't, I, they won't ask for, they'll ask for a previous work first. They'll be like, oh, show us your portfolio. And if that's good, then they'll ask you to pitch something as well, right? They'll ask you to come in and pitch something. And the difference in style between the two is In TV, if you had like a three-quarter shot of someone like that, just talking, it's like an OTS. Oh, let's make sure he looks at the person directly. So this might be like TV. And again, this is very subjective. This is just from my own experiences with this stuff. I, I would say try to talk to as many people about this as possible. Just because I think different people have experienced different things. I think there are different 
I think different studios have different policies, et cetera, et cetera. All right, so this might be something like for TV, right? TV, you have your grids, you have your two characters and you filled them in. All right, let's kind of do that one more time. So in feature instead, maybe, whoops. So that's TV. In feature instead, you'd probably have something more like this, right? You fill them in. You would also probably be doing your boards in Photoshop. That's a big part of it. Make sure it's in Photoshop. Just because they want to see the... Let me get out my nice brushes. They want to see... Oh man, what's going on here? Oops. That's why. Hold on a second. I'm fixing my clipping mask. All right. So in feature, they want to see like the, they want to see some rendering more. They want to see where the light's coming from. It, want, it should be a little bit more gestural in its execution. Like I think I know, I think you've seen feature storyboards before. Uh, I don't think you necessarily need the, well, you do need the grid lines. I take it back. And they, whereas in TV where someone is kind of like moving around, you'll have arrows. Let's say. If you were to raise his hands up like that. I have an idea. Whoop. You might put up an arrow like that, right? Like in TV, you might do that. But in feature, you wouldn't you wouldn't do that. You would just have his hand raise up and you would just have to like come draw it out. You could do like the, that, but you wouldn't need an arrow per se. But you would need to tone it out. That's all right. Right, so that's kind of a difference. That's the big difference. The other thing about feature is that they want to see you that you can tell a story. So the the thing about telling a beginning, middle, and end is even more important here because they want to know that you can come up with sequences. In feature, a lot of times you're expected to come up with sequences on your own. They'll give you like a short premise and you have to like finish it out. So they want to know that you can do that. And so that's part of the reason why they have you pitch. That's part of the reason why um, Having a beginning, middle, and end to your storyboard is very important. Kay says, hey David, good evening and thanks for the stream. I'm not sure if you mentioned this, but I keep hearing it's hard to get straight into feature boards and start with TV. And to start with, then to start with TV, I imagine is what you're saying. Any advice for someone who really likes feature boarding? Um, my advice for feature storyboarding then would be to draw. So there's there's three, three or four different companies that are that do feature boarding. It's Disney, DreamWorks, Sony, and Illumination. I'm missing DreamWorks, Disney, Sony, Illumination, um, Pixar, that's five, and Blue Sky. I guess those are kind of like the the big the big 
uh, studios. So I would suggest looking at the way they do storyboards. There's a very distinct style for each of them. DreamWorks feature storyboards. Disney feature storyboards. Star storyboards. Right? They all have a very specific look to them. So the whole, like what I was saying about things being gestural, it needs to be a little bit more gestural like this. You need to kind of render it out or tone it out a little bit more so that you can see where the light is coming from. Again, all the movement of the arrows and stuff is taken out. Let me see if I can just pull up specific. Uh, one of the storyboards. Um, so yeah, this is kind of more along the lines of that. Oh, I was talking about where you have the toning of it. You want to really see where the light is. You want to, you get a little bit more acting. Another, another thing that feature storyboards do a lot is they'll fill in the eyes with white. They might gray out everything else, but they'll always have the pupil, the, the eye be white. So there's that to keep in mind. But you can all, you can kind of see the differences between this and like TV storyboarding already. It's a little bit more loose. It's a little bit more pushed, and there's there's a little there's not as many of the technical things that you would need to indicate that something is happening, right? You wouldn't need those arrows. You wouldn't need all this other stuff. Oh, let me see. What I can, okay. Oh, is this it? Gosh, not what I want. Incredible storyboards. Yeah, these are all really good examples. Even this is a good example. This looks like it was done in Storyboard Pro, but it still works pretty well. Um, I hope that answered your question about feature versus TV. It's, you have to kind of show, you have to kind of like draw on their style and their way so that they know that you're a good fit. In the same way that when you apply for The Simpsons or Family Guy, they want to know that you can draw in their style. So if you're to send something like this over, they'd be like, oh, I don't think you're a good fit. Your drawings might look good, but I don't think you can do Simpsons, right? It's a it's a different thing. You have to match your work to match what you're applying for. After I says, is there a way a recruiter can gauge how timely a storyboard art storyboard artist is? I feel like I don't even know if I work at a good speed. That's something that is kind of hard to gauge. I don't think there's any good way to gauge it, and I think that is something that they might just ask you. They're like, oh, how long did this take you? <clears throat> um what is your like workflow what is your process and just be honest about it uh william says i wonder about speed also especially with brand new so okay says i study their boards but like an unnamed head of story told me they like hiring tv board artists because they're fast but i prefer to go straight into feature sorry if it was a complicated question um well in that case there's no reason why you can't go straight into feature. I know there are a couple. I know a couple people personally that have gone straight into feature from like school. I think it's maybe right time, right place. Also, sometimes for specific films, I hire specific people. I I know that there was one person that was really good at drawing horses, so they hired her directly onto. They hired her directly for a horse movie, right? Because she could draw horses. Like, oh, we think you're really good with this. We think you'd be a good fit. Um, in terms of TV and speed, yeah, TV artists are typically a little bit faster just because their deadline's a little bit shorter, but I don't think there's any one, like, 
perfect answer for how to get into the feature. I think you just need to have your work look similar to theirs. I think it needs to be cinematic, like the shot choices need to be cinematic, and you need to kind of just be at the right, right place, right time. Um, William says, I'd imagine you'd change your aspect ratio going from TV to feature also. Yeah, uh, again, like, I think that is part of it. Like, you, depending on the movie, you can have, like, anamorphic, which is, like, 2, 3, 9 to 1. To 1. Or, you know, maybe it's just 9 to 20 by 1080, which is, like, standard widescreen, which is 16 by 9. If I'm not mistaken. So you again what can help out a lot too just to like kind of make your work seem more cinematic is just add those black bars at the top and the bottom. Don't like don't crop into your frame necessarily but just add it so it looks cinematic. Um yeah so that was about feature and TV. In terms of TV, I think. Oh, why is that still there? Oh, okay. I think TV might be just a little bit easier again to just because there's more jobs available. Uh, I named five studio, six studios, and each studio produces maybe about one film every two years. So, if you think about it like that, there's not a whole lot of positions, right? Each story team might have anywhere from like. 10 to like 15 artists, but those artists are usually the best or they've been around for a long time. That's why they're in feature or, and on top of that, it's only, they're not going to, the turnover rate isn't very high. So you have to keep that in mind versus TV where there's new production starting up all the time. Uh, TV schedule usually has you only boarding for anywhere from like a half year to a full year because it takes about one year to produce one season of work. So the turnover, turnover rate is much, much faster, and there are way more studios. There's way more opportunity to work. There's way more diversity in the projects as well. So maybe you're not good for cinematic things, but you could do Simpsons, or you could do um, a Cartoon Network-style show. Like it's There's a little bit more wiggle room for, for artists to break in there. Um, does anyone else have portfolios they'd like to post up in the chat? I haven't seen anyone's but Mindy's. Which I think is good. Like, I think this is a, a great format for your storyboards to have it like this. Um, oh, sent an email. Nice, 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 nice. Let me get, let me pull up the emails. Perfect, perfect. Okay. Ooh. Nice. Yeah, this is what I'm talking about. Storyboard, art, storyboarder, illustrator, storyboard illustration, storyboards at the top. And then you, you can play through it already. It's nice. That's perfect. A pair of adventurers find themselves in way over their heads. Okay. Yeah, and then you have another one down below and another one. See, so that's good. You can either do it like how Mindy did or oh, Salafera. I think I would separate out the illustrations from storyboards per se. There's no, there's like, it would be a little bit confusing to have both. I can see why you would want to put it up there because you're like, well, I can storyboard and I can paint or I can storyboard and I can do these things, right? Like. I think it's the idea of like more is more, but in this case, it might just be easier to just have them separate because they want to know that you're, not only is it less confusing, but the recruiter also wants to know that you are going full in on storyboards, that you're really interested in doing storyboards. I think the hard thing about, I think the one thing that recruiters and employers in general are worried about is like they hire someone for a job and then Five weeks later, they're like, oh, I want to do a different job where they leave or they have, they want to get trained for something else. And that's always very, that's like a waste of their money and time. So it makes it really hard on them. 
That being said, yeah, just keep it separate if you could. That that make it a little bit easier for them. Contact professional. I would just put your email on your on your homepage somewhere. It's at the bottom, but I, I prefer to just have it at the top since yours is more vertically. Since since your website is more vertical, and that would mean you have to scroll all the way to the bottom. Just put it up at the top here, and just put it up at put it at the bottom as well. There's no reason why you can't have it in both places. But other than that, I think it's good. Yeah, I think it's it's organized very well, easy to find. Cool, 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 cool. Um, FRI says, is three like the magic number examples of storyboards to include? I would say three is a good number just because it's, that's about as much as anyone would look at storyboards. Like, let's say you have a storyboard that's like 200, 300 panels, like going through one storyboard will probably take like a good couple minutes. So yeah, I think three is a good number. It's about, uh, and I'm thinking about it more from a terms of someone trying to break in. Like having three is a pretty sizable task already. So yeah, as you work more, you'll have more to present. But three is a good thing to shoot for. Also, it's better than two because then they'll just be comparing the two to each other. Three is like everything's in threes. That's why there's like the rule of threes. That's why jokes always come in threes. That's why everything is in threes. Three is like a solid number to use. So I, I would say aim for three. If you don't have three, that's fine. Just put up one, put up two if you have them. But in those cases, just be prepared for them to ask you to test. They, if you put up like one good storyboard, they might be like, cool, but we don't know how long, we don't know if you're solid yet. So we might ask you to test or, hey, we know you can do this storyboard. Can you do one more? Or do you have any other examples? So definitely ask for more work. So just be, that's just something to keep in mind. Um, William says, so a recruiter won't worry about our sketchbooks or life drawings or stuff that, and, or stuff, that stuff if we're new. Um, I, that's hard. That's hard to say because so many people get hired for different reasons that I can't definitively say like, no, you don't need it. It's... It's not something that people look for per se later on, especially if you've been doing storyboards, you, you don't put life drawings in, you don't put sketches in. If you're breaking in, I know people always say like put life drawings in, but unless your life drawings are super good, I, I wouldn't necessarily include them. They're not particularly important for storyboarding. Your work should show that you can draw people. Your work should kind of show that you have these skills already so if you have to include it separately it's kind of a little bit weird again there have been people that have like really nice character drawings and like comics and they got hired based upon that but yeah i i, I wouldn't say it's necessary but if you want to put it in like sure again like i think it just has to be really good if you're going to put it in otherwise just keep it to your storyboards i think the other thing about storyboards is that people are a little bit more lenient about the drawings because they know that you have to do so many drawings right so if your anatomy is off in like one or two panels they'll be like oh whatever it's like he had to do 500 of those why does it matter and it they gauge kind of your skill level based upon all the drawings you did rather than just like a couple life drawing drawings that you did so i think storyboards allows you for more wiggle room in terms of skill in terms of being able to show off your skill and in terms of like um leniency in what they're looking for because they know that you have to do so many drawings right your drawings can be a little bit rougher they can be a little bit more gestural for that reason uh, let me grab some water. <clears throat> Ooh. Uh, um, God, 
Midmate says, would short animations animated GIFs be okay to include in a storyboard portfolio? Uh, if you have like a video clip of your work, like timed out, then put that in. That's always easy too. I don't know if GIFs are good for that because I think people want to be able to scroll back and forth and GIFs won't necessarily allow you to do that. Um, so embed it in a video and put it on your website. Again, make sure the timing is good. I don't think you necessarily need to have sound effects or anything, but I think you would need to have voices if you're, unless you put subtitles or something. Again, it's when you start including videos, you have to make it, you have to apply the same principles of it being easily accessible, easily watchable, and clearly presented, right? Like if you got a video where you, it was silent, but there was no dialogue or anything, but people are talking, like, that's not that's not going to help you. If you put subtitles on there, I guess it could work. Yeah, I guess it could work, but wouldn't it just be better to see someone hearing the voices come out? Especially since you already timed it out anyways. It's, it's a toss-up. I know some people put their work up as as like animated animatic clips and that's fine i think that's always good because it's, again it's easy to see what you're doing um you can see the pacing but that also means your timing has to be semi good that means you have to like make sure it embeds well so it comes with different challenges oh celifer says dope dope good to know what do you use to wordpress oh yeah so this would uh what is a good number what a guy says, what is a good number of panels for each of these boards? Hey, Chad. Uh, again, I can't tell you how many panels you should have because I think each story requires a different amount. I think it, depending on how much you pose it out. Like just between Ocelifera and Min, Min Maze, I think they have different amounts, right? Like I think it's a... Well, I guess this one doesn't tell you, but I, I've seen this one before, so it's it's quite a bit more. Or, and then like looking at my own work, it's a huge, it's a big chunk. So it, it depends on what you, it depends on your story. If you can tell a beginning, middle, and end in 50 panels, great, do that. If you have to take 400 panels to do it, then do that. It, it also depends on if it's like an action sequence. It depends on if it's like a more dialogue heavy sequence. It depends on how many poses you want to put in. So. I can't give you a specific number. My way that I think is the best is beginning, middle, and end. Your story should have a beginning, middle, and end. It doesn't have to be like Lord of the Rings beginning, middle, and end where they get the ring and they take the ring and they drop the ring off. It doesn't have to be like that. It can be like a a short beginning, middle, and ending talking sequence, right? Like every scene in a movie has a beginning, middle, and end. Like if you take, for example, um, What's a good, what's a movie that just came out recently that would be good for that? Let's just go to The Incredibles, right? In The Incredibles, it starts off with them interviewing, then they beat up the bad guys, and then they get married, and then the clip again, right? There's a beginning, middle, and end to that. Beginning, middle, and end. The beginning is them talking to the camera, doing the interviews. The middle is like the fighting, and then the end is when they get married and we see that like their dynamic that they're getting married and then the newsreel after that where it says supers have to go on hiding beginning middle and end that might be a little bit longer than what you would expect but even in that there's like beginning middle and endings like the conversation between mr incredible and mrs incredible there's like a their banter at the start there's some meat in the middle and then it ends with her going away and flipping about so yeah, intro to uh, clock clock rock or green says intro to up. That's a great example. Beginning, middle, and end, and you don't even have any dialogue. Like, that's perfect. That would be perfect for it too. All right, so we have Kenny's. Yeah, this is great too.
Um, <clears throat> Kay says, I have a poor man website. No, I, I started off with a blog spot as well. I don't think... Not having a website is... You know, if it's not on a website, that's not a big deal. It just needs to be presentable, right? A lot of people do it through Tumblr or through Blogspot and have specific Blogspot or Tumblrs for that. And as long as your work is easily viewable and clear, that's all that matters. It doesn't matter if it's on a website or not. Great, that's good too. You have your resume that's accessible. Oh wait, damn it. <clears throat> Story portfolio. I would put this at the top. I would put audible at the top because I think it's clearer. I wasn't quite sure what this stuff was, right? Like you have these beats, but I think audible one, I think the storyboard is good. It looks, this looks very featurey. And two, I think this is a better way to get them into your work, just to show them the storyboard. So have this right under here, right? Just have your story portfolio. Also include your email somewhere up here too. Have your email somewhere around here, somewhere, even if it's on the side here, anywhere. Just include your email, then put your otter storyboards there because I think those are really good. Whoa, this is new. And then put that, put this one up underneath it too. So put otter and then put the, what was it, buddy? Uh, cross paths underneath it. And then put rebels right underneath that, right? And this is a good. I think this is a good variety of storyboards. One you have like kind of like a heartwarming character one. Then you have a more dramatic one here, and then you end it on an action one. And I think that's great. That's a good setup to have. Just have all your storyboards first, right? Just have otter, cross paths, rebels. And then if you want to include the thumbnails, include those at the bottom. But I don't think having the thumbnails right after is very useful because I don't think anyone's going to look through your thumbnails like this and go through all of it. They'll just play through your th storyboards. If you have it in, in a clickable version, they'll just click through it. They won't look at your thumbnails, right? This is really good. Yeah, this is really good. So just have otter cross paths and then rebels underneath it and at the very bottom i know you have life drawing stuff but i don't think you need to include this since you're you already have people that you drew in the other storyboards and they look good i think having your resume at the get at the bottom again is very smart and i think this is fine i think having like a little end is fine it's not necessarily but it's, it's nice to have too so, yeah, um, but again, like, I don't think you need to have a fancy website. Having it on Blogspot or Tumblr is totally fine. I did the same thing. Just make sure it's separate from your personal one. We don't want to see your fan art next to your storyboard portfolio stuff. Nothing against your fan art. It's just, I don't, I'm not talking about you specifically, Kenny. I just mean, keep your personal and your prof Portfolio stuff separate, just so it's not confusing. Um, Afro Eye says, when it comes to board genre, is it better to be specific or to show all your skills? I would say your storyboard should reflect the job you're applying for. So if you're applying for an action show, make sure to show action. If you're applying for a comedy show, make sure to make them laugh. If, you, if you're doing something more character-based, Give them those extra character poses. It should match the job you're applying for. Like I'll switch around my storyboards based upon who I'm sending it to. I won't send the same thing to every person. Whew, that's spicy. Mm. Um, does anyone else have any portfolios? Send them to my email at 
dwoman.art at gmail.com. Let's see. <clears throat> Uh, contact information, finished work. Um, best work for. I guess this would go under contact. Have your work match. Show have your work match the job you're applying for. Action for action. Storyboards for action show. Um, and that's kind of basically it. Those are all my tips about making a good portfolio. That's all my tips about presenting your work properly. And I think at that point, it's more, if you have it set up properly like that and you have work, then from there, it's like reaching out to studios, it's making sure other people can see your work, it's improving the work you have, right? So just because you have three storyboards done doesn't mean your job ends there. You kind of have to like improve upon it and go back and look at your work and see how you can fix it. It's, it's kind of tough because it's, I think all things are look plus Preparation equals opportunity. You never know how you're going to get in. You never know how, like, I think everyone gets in very differently. I think everyone has different skill sets so it's hard to say what you exactly have to do and i think people that say like you have to do this one thing to get in are kind of being dishonest because you know i do feel like the people in the industry are pretty lucky right they're we somehow were able to thread the needle and everyone threads it differently and so you just kind of have to put yourself in a place where you have the best shot is what I'm saying. And it's a little bit of luck. Things are unfair. It's just being prepared and being ready or being prepared and being in the right place at the right time. KD says plus timing. Yeah. Timing is a big part of it too. Clock Rocker Green says any thoughts on how clean's board should be for TV in the portfolio? It's, uh, let's look. Let's, let's look at some storyboards again. Oh, Mr. Meguel sent his website and Rebecca, oh. Oh, there's a pop-up, pop. Oh, okay, so I think Kenny's work, Kenny, I'm assuming Kenny is a guy. I'm sorry if I'm wrong, uh, is pretty good for uh, TV, I think, and it's good for a feature as well. It's loose, but it's not super jittery. I think you have to just be careful when the work gets really scratchy, but I think Kenny's stuff is fine for TV. It's clean, it's clear. If we look at the human stuff, also, like, the drawings are very clear, very clean. When you get closer, they add in more, he adds in more detail, so, that works. Like I think this is pretty clean for TV and will work. I think it's a good good barometer for TV stuff. I think let's look at Mr. Miggy Wells and see what that looks like. Miggy Wells Montez, nice storyboard artist, email. He's an arrow buttons to navigate. Um, I would, I would probably leave out the line. If you need a board artist, I need a job. So send me an email or direct message. Hope you find what you're looking for. Uh, yeah, I would take out that. It makes you sound a little bit desperate. 
and just like a first date, you don't want to come off being desperate. You want you want to play it cool. You want people to know that you've been doing this for a while. You want them to think that you're like a, a professional. Professionals don't say, I need work. Professionals are like, you should hire. You. They don't even say that you should hire me. They know they're hireable, right? You want to go in being cool. You want to be like, sup, sup. Hey, I've been here for a while. I know you. You know me. We're, we're all good. So I think the other part is fine. Taking, take, take a look at my storyboard portfolio. Below are some storyboards and you can find other work by following the links to my social media. That's great. You can use the arrow buttons to navigate the boards once you click on the image once. I think the other two parts, if you need to, I think you can take out, if you need a board artist, I need a job. So send me an email or a direct message. Hope you find what you're looking for. You can take out both of those. You don't need those. You want to play cool, baby. You want to play it real cool, real easy, real chill. I know that Minway says the struggle is real. It, the, the struggle is real. That's why you have to play cool. You have to, you have to, when the pressure, when things get hot and the pressure increases, you got to be able to just stand there and take it. Got to put on your shades. Enjoy, enjoy seeing everyone else get cooked, but not you because you're as cool as a cucumber. Cool. Wow, this is nice. Tardy storyboard. Except for, for, so you can click on it. Nice. This is great. You can see everything very cleanly. The dialogue is there. Poses are good. This is also a good example of the cleanliness of a. This is like really clean actually for TV storyboards, but it's good. Yeah. This is great. This is great. Tardy storyboards. Um. Interesting. Okay. Also good. <clears throat> tap, 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 tap. Yeah. I think this works really well as well. And then two storyboards. Two. One, two. Yeah, two. I think it's fine that you have two. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, They're both really easy to look at. They're both easy to click through so that's really, <laughs> that's really funny so the only thing that might you might run into is they might just be like hey do you have one more or do you want to test right but other than that i think it's good you have everything very clear very easy to man navigate and manage and perfect cool you have it in two languages too yeah this is all great this is all good Cool. Awesome. Okay, uh, Minmay says, chill while watch everyone else get cooked. A little kind of savage. You gotta be the cool one. You got, while all the other crabs in the pot are boiling, you wanna be the one that doesn't get cooked so they don't eat you. Kay says, but I'm terrible at dating. Oh no. Uh, you know, it's, just gets easier, I guess. I, you just gotta, you just have to have confidence in yourself and just relax. Okay, so I kind of like this whole image thing at the start, but I don't know where to go for storyboards, right? I think it's good that you have your name here. I think it's good that you have story artists. You should probably have contact info somewhere around here, like your email already. And then you should probably have your storyboards somewhere on here. This is fine, but I think you need to have your storyboards on the front page. Single panel stories. Oh, I see what you mean. So it's telling a whole image in one drawing. These are nice. I think you need to put this. You need to put your storyboards on the front page. That's cool.
Food chain. Short pump. Okay, so I think, I think, oh, you can go, oh, there you go. Oh, interesting. I think you should put your storyboards on this page right here. You should put your Moto Girls and then the one after it, what was it called again? Food Chain. So put Moto Girls, Food Chain, and have it be accessible from your front page. I think it's fine to have short comics and single panel stories elsewhere if you want to keep it in. Um, but... It was confusing to me because your single panel stories came up first and I was like, wait a minute. Like I thought we were like showing storyboards here. So I was a little bit confused. So you might want to put that second or you might want to put that elsewhere. I think it's fine to have. Same with the short comics. I know some people get hired for the comics they do because it's, it's a way of storytelling. So I think if you can tell a good story through comics then storyboarding is kind of adjacent to it and kind of similar but you should definitely have your storyboards first if you want to do storyboards <clears throat> Rebecca says the portfolio button can also be clicked for a landing page but it's definitely not clear right now Oh, I didn't even know that. Yeah, that, I did not know that. Um, that's good to know. Cool. Uh, Koopa Box, Dung, Purple, and PDF. Cool, cool, cool. Both are cool. Yeah, just move your email somewhere on this so that it's always available. Uh, Afra says, do you think any original sequences you've made with existing characters shouldn't go in a portfolio like fan-made scenes, I guess? Um, come to the about page. I think, I, I don't think there's anything wrong with showing fan stuff. Like, let's say you did like a Naruto storyboard or you did like a, a One Punch Man storyboard. I think that's fine. I think as long as there's like a beginning, middle, and end. Again, as long as you can tell a story, that's all that matters, right? I don't know. I don't know how other people would react to it. I wouldn't have a problem with it. I'd just be like, that's cool. If it was done well, if it was like a new take on the character. Well, even if it was like kind of this played into its tropes, I think that'd be fine. But I think what I would be looking for is one, technical drawing skills, and then two, if you can tell a story. So... Yeah, if you can tell a story, beginning, middle, and end, that's that's all that matters. I don't think using other characters is so bad. Especially when you think about all, all the professional work is work that you're doing for someone else's characters, right? So, like, the work I'm showing is of troll hunters and, like, turbo. So, technically, they're kind of, like, not my own creations. Uh, Minmay says, what kind of tone would the about page be? Serious, humorous, and casual? Serious, question mark, humorous, and casual? Question mark. I think it depends what you're trying to project. Um, I think it depends on who you are personally, right? Like, I think with mine, it's kind of informative and kind of weird. Because I, I don't, I need to separate myself out from other people. I need to kind of distinguish myself as more than just David. There are a lot of Davids out there. There are a lot of storyboards out there. I need to kind of like separate myself out from that. So I have a weirder picture. I talk a little bit about my credits and I just make it a little bit different. If this is, you need to kind of like find what your thing is, right? If you're not that weird person, then don't do that. Don't be not you, be you. If you are like straight laced and if you're just like, to the point, then be that. If you are quirky and weird, then do that. If you are like, whatever you feel comfortable with is what you should be projecting on there. Because 
they will hire you for you. And if you project something else, then they'll be con they'll kind of be like, whoa, we got bamboozled. We they did like a bait and switch type thing. So make it something that you're comfortable with and something that represents you. If the about page isn't like the end all be all because if they like your work and like you have a bad about page, I don't think they will say no. They'll just be like, well, let's interview the person, right? So if you can get to the interview phase, that's great because then you can be you even more in person. You can answer the questions. You can do what you need to do to kind of like sell yourself. And I think that's a whole nother thing, interviews and how to approach interviews as well. But for the about page, it should be you. Try not to be desperate. Just be like a dating profile. Again, everything, it's it's a dating profile thing. Like just be like, I like long walks on the beach and tacos. <laughs> And you better like long walks on the beach and tacos if you're going to say those things. Or just be like, I'm, my name is Hinata. I love to play volleyball and I can jump real high. You can find my work here. You know, it doesn't have to be too crazy. Look at other people's portfolios, see what they say. Look at other people's websites. Afro Aya says, do you think that applies to the site as well? Like, will it be distracting to make the site beautiful or something? Um... I think mm, that's hard to say because I, I've seen some really nice websites and I'm like those are nice. Let me, you know what? Let me see if I can go to um, the Animation Guild, right? If you go to the Animation Guild webpage, you can actually see other artist storyboards, I believe, right? So here's. Crystal Khan, you can just click on our portfolio. Story per animation story person, story artist. I'm available. I wonder if you can go our website. Website. Boom. Oh. Wow, this is pretty fancy. Whoa. So this is a this was just by random chance. This is a pretty fancy website in and of itself. Um, personally, I'm kind of like confused what I'm supposed to be looking at. But man, this is a, this is a fancy website about me. Oh, that was, oh, okay. So it's just detail it was a detailed view. Whoa, well, that's interesting. Um, okay, so what are your guys' thoughts on this? Because I, I think the website is really pretty and really fancy, but I don't think it takes away from her work, per se. Illustration and sketches at the bottom. That's fine. Um, thank you, Crystal, for letting me look at your work. I This is totally around. It was totally random um but the animation guild website is a good place to see other people's work right like let's say you're building a portfolio for a character or props or something color stylist prop designer prop design big hero 6 look so this is this is a great website too it has all the stuff really easy to find right here you just click on it boom you look through our work and this is like a great prop design portfolio. Go back, prop and set design. This looks pretty cool too. So you already have like a good idea of the style she can do. You can already see the work she's done. Boom, go back. All right, so this is, this is really well laid out for someone who's doing prop, and, prop design and background design. Um, yeah, this is great. This is a great website too.
Yeah, her about page is pretty quick too. Hi there, I'm a designer in animation, specializing in color design, prop design, biz dev. I enjoy design exploration, world of da, da, da. Very straightforward, very easy. Nice. Nice, this is great. Great stuff. Uh, but yeah, that's, if you go to the, the Animation Guild webpage, you can look through people's portfolios, get ideas for how to make things better. Steven Park, why is that? I think I follow him actually. <laughs> Let's see his portfolio. Let's take a look at his stuff. Wow, this is fancy already. Um, yay, Crystal. I don't like how tiny the, Ethan says I don't like how tiny the images are though. Oh no, this one's not. Yeah, I think it was like one too many clicks to actually get to the storyboards, but she didn't ask me to review her stuff. Then I was say, um, met her at Lightbox. Really cool person. Yeah, and she's on the executive board for the animation guild so she she's a good person to talk to if you have questions about animation in general because she ha probably has a lot of answers william says i've been looking through the credits of shows to see who the board artists are and then googling them to see if they have portfolio sites yeah that's why i did too i did that for okko okay and some of them have some you can find some of their work on their websites and it's pretty good or you can just find their instagram and twitter handles and that's also pretty good too Osella Ferra says, looking at all these portfolios is inspiring or really inspiring. Makes me want to practice some more. Thanks. Good to know. Thank you. Um, Uh-oh. Steven's website isn't working. Uh -uh. Maybe his blog is working. Uh-oh. Both are down. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Let's see what happens if I go to his pencil map. Uh oh. Um. Well, that's gonna be a little hard. I think I've seen his work though before. Like, I'm pretty sure I follow him. Oh, so here's one of the things about gifs. Sometimes they don't play right. Like, you can see it playing down here, and playing here. But if you click on it, it doesn't play for some reason. I'm not sure why. That's the only thing about gifs is kind of like iffy. Is sometimes it doesn't work, etc. I think I follow Stephen Park on. Oh man. That's, I think it's linked incorrectly. Oh, that's that's even worse. Not even his fault. Uh, I believe on the website as well, you can actually search for, you can actually search based upon the job position. Go back, command A. Jobs, email archive. Oh, member search, there you go. So if you click member search, wow, this is so slow. Stevenpark.com. Oh, interesting. Is this Steven or Stefan? Stefan Park. Cool stuff. Artist working in animation in Los Angeles. Currently a store bar artist on the third season on DuckTales. Previous da 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 da. Great. Yeah, he has all this, all this stuff right there. Has his work right up here. Perfect. So I'm talking about. Nice. You just click through it. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, his GIFs are playing. Nice. Oh, this is great. So he has his Animax cut out, cut and timed. Pop right Nickelodeon. So this is good to have too. If you can get this, this is great. If not, then it is what it is. Not everyone can have that, but it's not it's not a huge deterrent. It's just if you have it, you have it. If you don't, you don't. Oh, this was the other turtle series, the three D turtle series, I think. Right? That's cool. Oh, I'll have to look at this later. Um, yeah, but this is really easy to follow, really great. Nice. Nice. Um, yeah, so here's, if you go to the member section, right? Um, community, member search. You can actually search for the type of artist you want. So let's say we only want to look at storyboard artists. Story artists. Production board artist. Storyboard artist, 
uh, available. We'll click search and I'll just bring up all the storyboard artists in there that are available for work. And we can just look through their profiles and stuff. I guess it's alphabetical. Dang, my name is going to be further back. <laughs> Well, then you can click on any of their profiles. Um, let's just click on Douglas because I like that picture. And then you can click on their website. Oh, not his website, but interesting. Did I click on that wrong? Uh, click on that, I guess. Hey, there you go. Let's work. Or some of Zork. Not a hundred percent. Anyways, that's that's how you can look at people's work, look at their websites and see take things that you think are working. And pay attention to when you look at someone else's website. Like think about what you're feeling when you go through it, like, oh, was that easy to find? Was that easy to navigate? Um what did it make me feel? And then take those same feelings and like apply it to your work. Like if there's things that you like, then be like, why is that working? If it's things that you don't like, be like, okay, I'm not going to do that. Uh, Minmay says, that's what I meant in my previous question. That I was thinking about adding GIFs in my portfolio like Steven did. I think it's fine. I'm not 100% sure how I feel about that yet. Because it does look cool. It's just I'm not sure what I'm getting out of it. Like... Does that show that you can animate or is it just to make it move around so your eye goes there? I'm not, I'm on the fence. I, I, I can't, I don't really have any definitive advice on that. So do as you please. Um, did more people have portfolios they wanted me to look at? We looked at Mr. Miguel's, Rebecca's, Kenny's, Ocelifera, uh, and Minmay's. Job your plan for actions from I think that's everything, right? I think I went over everything for portfolio stuff. Um yeah, that's that's everything I have on portfolios. If you guys want me to review storyboards, uh I guess let me know. Otherwise we can cut the stream short tonight and everyone can go go chill out before Thanksgiving. Or Chill out before Thanksgiving Eve. I think it's only about 9.20 right now. So, yeah, early night. Take it easy. You know, watch some movies. Did anyone do thumbnails from a movie this past week? Did anyone do that? Um, Osella Farah has a question. Uh, do you have any tips for overcoming anxiety about tackling a difficult project? I find that sometimes I can get... I can really get in my own head about it. Okay, so for that, I would suggest, for any big project, I would suggest break it up into smaller chunks. Chunk it out. Let me go back to this one then. So, put that away for now. Let's say your project is, I want to draw a 100 page comic, right? That's your goal. 100 page comic. Boop. I would suggest trying to make it into smaller sections, right? 10 pages, 10 parts, 10 pages. So now the number is a little bit smaller, right? You only have to do 10 tens. And then from there, I would be like, okay, how long? does it take me to draw one page, right? If it takes you one week, then you know that it will take you a hundred weeks to finish the comic. And at that point you're like, okay, do I really want to work on this for two years? Is this worth it? If it is something that is worth it, try to figure out how you can speed up that one page. Like maybe I can get it down to, maybe I can get to two pages in one week. And that'll only take you one year at that point, right? And once you figure out that, like, okay, we're going to do two pages in one week, be, like, disciplined about your work ethic and trying to match 
trying to just hit that deadline every week. Be like, okay, I just need to do two pages. I just need to do two pages the next week. Don't think about the 100 page part. Think about it in smaller chunks because it's a lot easier to tackle that way. So when you're, because like, let's say when Monday rolls around, you're like, oh, I haven't even started yet. Oh, I haven't even like, so all the days are coming up, right? So you're like Monday, Thursday, Saturday, Sunday. So you know, to do two pages a week, that means you have to spend roughs on maybe like Monday, Tuesday. Then cleans will probably take you like another two, three days. And then Saturday, Sunday, I don't know, maybe that's your break or maybe that's writing, like setting up for the next week, right? Figure out what you're writing in the next week. So as you're going through the week, you can be like, oh, I'm behind schedule. Oh, I need to, I need to speed it up. I need to do this, I need that. And it makes it a lot more manageable because you can see it in smaller chunks of time. You don't have to think about like, oh no, there's a hundred pages and I only have done five. Just try to chunk it out into smaller bits so that your goals are easier to hit. Like let's say you hit your goal and you're like, great, I did it. The next week you do it again, hit it. Oh, great, you feel great. You build up like this momentum. And as you build up the momentum, it gets easier and easier to do. You start feeling great about yourself. You, the goal starts becoming more manageable. You're like, oh, I did 20 pages? That went by so fast. That was just 10 weeks. That's just two months. I can do another 10. I can do another 10. Da, 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 da. And so you just, you tackle it like that. Um, okay, says thumbnailing right now. Ethan says thumbnailing. Awesome. Yeah. The, Rebecca says, I thumbnailed some Big Hero 6 and John Wick. Hey, why don't you guys upload your thumbnails? I'm very curious to see what that looks like. Just post them up. Either send me like a, a email or just post up an image of it. Can you post images in the chat? Try posting an image in the chat and let me, I'm just curious. Chad says, side note, at CTN, I picked up books of Satoshi Kon storyboards for Paprika and Tokyo Godfather. Having not seen either film and not understanding the language the books are written in, great investment. Yeah, Satoshi Kon is like insane. His his storyboards are just basically the film, but without color. He draws it completely on model. Even his his mangas are drawn so well. So this is well. We'll get to Satoshi Kon in a little bit. Um. Oh, Silla Farah, does that, does that make sense about chunking up your work? Like set, have your big goal, but then have your big goal. And then make it into smaller goals, smaller goals. Turn to smaller goals so that's this is exactly what i did for this stream the the storyboarding stream um my goal was to just do two months of storyboard streaming and then after two months i would decide what to do and then so i hit the two months i was like i kind of like this i'm going to keep going and then you know what maybe my next goal is to make my videos shorter and then my next goal was make better thumbnails and, and after that it was like okay do better uh find a better way to get people on the same platform and then it was to make it more understandable and then find out how better teach it like when i started it wasn't trying to be perfect it was just trying to get me going right the first two months was just like okay let me see if i like this let me see how i do this i know i'm going to fail but my goal is just to get to two months. That was it. After I got to two months, I realized I did like it. And then I started to look at different things I needed to improve. Content. And then it was like presentation. And then it was also like outreach. And so it was kind of like I, I tackled each part differently. And as my time commitment changed, that had to change too. So we used to do like what? An hour of just talking about different concepts and then an hour of review. Now it's gone all to review just because I don't have to 
I don't have as much time to come up with like videos to show. So I guess it's all to say that even for things like this, I take big goals and I turn them into smaller goals. And it just makes it easier to handle. Uh, yeah. Osella Farah says, that does help. I think it definitely helps to not think of these projects as like huge and intimidating, especially I need to keep in mind that it doesn't have to be perfect. Exactly. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be perfect, especially on your first go around. I think that's something that artists get hung up on is perfection. I think it's easier just to start because no one gets it right on the first try. When you do like a huge, let's say again, let's go back to the comics, right? The first the first 10 pages you draw of your character will look totally different than the last 10 pages you draw because as you draw the character more and more, you'll start to have like your own like shorthand for the character. You'll start to draw them a certain way. And so even manga artists who draw, like not until at the start, was drawn with like super spiky hair. Like his hair was so spiky. It, it could like pop balloons. His eyes were like really like a lot smaller in fact but as the series went on as he drew him more it got more softer everything got softer because i think one the pencil mileage and two it was just more appealing i guess and his eyes got a little bit bigger and so it doesn't have to be the whole point is it doesn't have to be perfect you'll get better as you do it and then you're really just trying to build momentum you really want to get yourself moving because as soon as you start yourself like doing this consistently it becomes easier to keep doing it consistently and then when you stop doing it you'll feel weird you're like oh man i stopped i need to kind of get back to it you're trying to build a habit is really what you're trying to do so by having smaller goals it's easier to do repetitively repetitively and eventually you'll turn it into a habit and the habit will feel good and then just keep doing it Joshua says, you're also able to better reflect on your mistakes when you're able to follow through and not worry about mistakes during the process. Yes. Don't let your mistakes or failures stop you from actually doing it because it's worse to have nothing than to have something that's only like 50% there. It's better to have something at the end than to have nothing at all. You'd rather have a semi-sweet cake than no cake. Minmay says, yeah, every time I try to aim for perfection, I get scared to start. It's something I can occasionally have to fight. Yeah, I am the exact same. When I draw, I'm like, oh, this is going to be painful. And then I, I don't want to do it. And then I just do it anyways. And then I'm like, okay, that was bad. And then I just draw on top of it. Like if I do a bad drawing, I'll be like, okay, that was bad. Let me try again. And, you know, it's just a rough. It doesn't have to be perfect the first time. Um... So just do it. Just really just do it. Don't don't think about like it being perfect. Don't think about having to post it online or do anything like that. Just do it. Just start doing it. You'll feel so much better without you'll be you'll feel so much better when you're done with it, even if it's not perfect, than if you're to start it and never finish it. No one will read a half finished comic, but people will read a full comic even if it's bad. Same thing with storyboards. No one's going to read, no one's going to flip through a half finished storyboard. They'll flip through a full storyboard, even if it's bad. Okay. Um. Oh yeah, Satoshi Kon, super, super good. So he used to do comics before. Yeah, no problem. I think, I think everyone feels the same, so you're not alone. I think all artists have this, this feeling of like pressure and it's, it's okay to have it. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just, you can't like stop you. You just have to push through it. So before Satoshi Kon did animation, he was doing comics and he did a couple of different ones. One is Dream Fossil and if you look at his drawings, they're they're pretty like spot on. They he he draws incredibly well already, and his movies look like his drawings basically.
yeah like all this stuff looks very very much like paprika they're very well detailed like super super detailed drawings of of people and if you look at storyboards it's the exact same way like they're just super tight but he is a great storyteller and a great cinematographer so just look at his work um chad says baby steps is real and super helpful yep that's that's how i do everything i i just chunk it into something smaller it it's really it just makes everything so much more manageable uh minmay says i also keep that in mind when i apply to jobs too i might not be ready for it but i just apply anyways yeah just do it like even if you're not perfect yet I would still apply because you never know what will get their attention. You'll never know if you're actually good enough for it. Like, like you, you don't know if you don't put yourself out there. You miss a hundred percent, a hundred percent of the shots you don't take. Michael Scott, Wayne Gretzky, Dave. You have to take those opportunities. You have to like, you you can't win the lotto if you don't buy a lottery ticket. And yeah, Ethan says you can learn a lot on the job. Yes, I learned the most on the job. The school was school had never prepared me for it. It got me like twenty five percent of the way, but the job itself was like all of it. You learn so much more on the job, and I think I think when you come into the industry, a lot of what people are looking for is not only a skill, but like let's say you get your foot in the door and you're actually working. I think people know that most people aren't ready to be professionals right they they know that there's a huge like learning curve from being a student to a, a professional worker and so there's a little bit of leeway in terms of like how good you are what they're really looking for is if you can listen if you are a hard worker and if you can actually show that you're trying to improve and kind of in a little bit actually improve as well so it's you have to you have to keep that in mind as well. It's not gonna be perfect the first time around. Um K says you should give us weekly homework like the thumbnails. <laughs> I I mean if you want to do homework, that's fine. I'm not gonna assign it, but if you wanna do it, that's fine. I'll take a look at it. No one no one posted their thumbnails in the chat for that matter. F's for all of you guys. F's. <laughs> Oh, you emailed it. Oh, perfect. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Shashin. John Wick Indro. Blurred a clip clop. It's like fish eye. Oh. I like how you wrote what it was too. Just so you can know. Uh, blue color draw. Yeah, I see like it doesn't I like your drawings because it's 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 simple enough to know what the shot is. Like it's not it's exactly what it needs to be. Just you know what the composition kind of looks like. You know what's important and Yeah, this is great. This is perfect. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah. And you get you get a good feel of what's happening already. You you have the composition, you get a feel for shot to shot to shot, like this shot to that shot, that shot, that shot. Like it it flows. There's a story here and, and the thumbnails are working. Oh, I didn't I gotta switch you over guys. I am so sorry. <laughs> okay, so she did John Wick intro. This is really bad. I'm just saying it's this is this is really good. Like this is exactly what it needs to be. The the drawings aren't are simple enough but detailed enough to know what's going on. You have a good sense of the composition. You have you know she even wrote down what the camera move is and and notes like why the shots were there, etc. etc. 
and it's not super detailed like his face isn't even drawn in these and it still works like it still works because you know, we're not trying to make pretty drawings with these thumbnails we're trying to understand how they we're trying to take in both composition and shot choice at the same time so we're looking at the composition we're looking at the composition and then we're seeing how this goes to this and then this goes to this and this goes to this and thinking about how this shot connects to this shot how this shot connects to this shot like you're you're just training your eyeball um we can't see the screen can we see it so, uh any top recommendations to thumbnail from uh you can just do like the top afi 100 they're great top afi 100 movie those are all like classics like citizen kane um gone with the wind well citizen kane number one that one's good godfather is great uh lawrence of arabia is great schindler list vertigo star wars you couldn't if you chose any one of these it would be good Brilliant. dr strange any stanley kubrick film is good um any of steven spielberg's older movies are good um ridley scott was good back in the day alfred hitchcock is good um, martin scorsese usually has some pretty good stuff francis ford coppola has the godfather and uh, crap. Apocalypse Now are good. Saving Private Ryan is good. Man, there's so many good ones. Oh, man. All right, how many movies on this list have you seen? I've seen this one, 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 this one. City Lights. I don't think I've seen that one. I don't remember The Searchers. I know I've seen it. Star Wars, seen that. Psycho, yes, yes. Billy Wilder. No. Yes. No, I haven't seen that. Yes. Yes, yes, yeah. Mr. Smith goes to what? Nope. Some of these are kind of like outdated though, now that I think about it. But yeah, any one of these movies, pretty great to study from. Yeah, cinematography, Oscar nomination is a good place to go as well. Billy Wilder. Clockwork says, do you think it would be useful to do thumbnails from type of cartoons you want to work on to get a sense of style? Yeah, I think that wouldn't hurt either. I think that'd be good too. Ethan says, anything cinematography by Roger Deakins? Oh, yeah, Roger Deakins. Solid. Super solid. Study his stuff. Rebecca says, how do you feel about studying from finished films versus studying from other storyboards? Um... I would do thumbnails of films, but I don't think I would do thumbnails of someone's storyboards. I'd probably just kind of sit down and look at their work, and then if it was something that I really wanted to like put into my brain, then I'd draw it out. But uh, I don't know. I feel like there's it can't hurt to study like to draw other people's storyboards. Yeah, I don't. Anytime you're like studying by looking and drawing, will always help. So there's nothing wrong with doing that either. Oh, Steven Spielberg has five. Oh, sure. Yeah, definitely all Steven Spielberg films on here are good. His newer stuff is not so good. It's like really bad. Raiders of the Lost Ark, Saving Private Ryan. Wait a minute. Schindler's List. Oh, wait, let's go back up. E.T. Oh, E.T. is so good. Yeah, you should watch E.T., man. E.T. is great to study from. I just watched that recently. Solid. Jaws also. Oh. 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 <laughs> oh, man. So good. Um, Kane says, I like studying other people's storyboards for the shorthand and how they draw moving their cameras. Yes. That's what I do. I study other people's storyboards to see what they're doing in a, in a technical aspect for storyboarding. Um, shot choice and stuff is also important, but it's more to see like, oh, what they're doing and how I can kind of like uh, put that into my work as well. Uh, Rebecca says, but is Cowboy Bebop on the list? Damn, why you gotta... Oh, that hurts. Why you gotta hurt me like that? Uh, 
No, it's not. It's not. I wonder if there's like an AFI list of films considered the best. Interesting. I wonder if there's like a AFI top. Oh, animation. Snow White, Pinocchio, Bound Beer. Dude, I think that needs to be like re redone. I think it needs to kind of get changed up. Those are kind of old school. Ooh, science fiction. Ooh, this is a good list. Um, what is it? Cowboy. They they need to do like a top one hundred animes. List of films considered the best. Oh my goodness. Jeez Louise. Yeah, Cowboy Bebop is like top 10 best animes of all time. I said it. I could even say it's top five. Um, homework, make a new top AFI list. Dang, that's hard. I don't know if I could do that. That's just so much, that's like so much watching. Uh, did other people send me thumbnails? Let me check. Nope. But yeah, hey, if you guys want to send, if you guys want to do thumbnails and show me, that's great. I have no problem with that. I don't think I'll assign homework. I'll give suggestions, but I don't think I'll ever assign homework. I feel like everyone's busy already as is and you know, if you want to do it, that's cool. If you don't want to do it, that's also cool. Um, but yeah, I guess that's everything. We we talked about portfolio stuff. We talked about jobs. We talked about how to break things into smaller chunks. We talked about thumbnails. Anything else? You guys want to learn how to make a turkey? You guys want to learn how to make a... a okay. This is what we'll talk about. I'm going to teach you guys how to make a pie for Thanksgiving because this is what's important. This is what's important in life. If you guys aren't making pies, I can't help you. It, you guys can go at this point. If you don't want to learn how to make a pie, that's fine. We're, we're going to be talking about making pies now. Um, the storyboard part of the stream is done. Submit or hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, you know. Spread the good word of storyboarding, but we're going to be talking about pies now, and that's that's what's important. So let's talk about pies. Um, uh, where is it? Okay, we are talking about banana cream pies, right? So the when I was growing up, my mom and auntie would make this one dessert. It's called banana cream pie. It's the best pie ever. I'm going to put it on record. It's the best pie ever. You guys can send me your pies. You guys can give me pie recipes. It's not going to be as good. This one is the best. And it's, it's really easy to make. And you should make it because it's really hard to mess up. Basically, you get a 9 by 13 pan. All you need is some butter, sugar, flour, cream cheese, milk, bananas, and whipped cream, right? Super, super easy, really. Basically what you're doing is you mix the butter and flour together, you pack it down into the, the pan and it makes a crust, you just bake it for a little while, pull it out, it's basically a shortbread cookie crust. It's basically shortbread. Then you set aside, you make vanilla pudding, mix it up, add cream cheese to it, like a block of cream cheese, it gives it thickness and a little bit of flavor you then set that aside cut up the bananas make sure they're ripe put them in the pan with the crust cover that with the vanilla pudding cover that with cool whip and then add crushed walnuts on top and it's done it is the best dessert ever i am i can't tell you how good it i it is unbelievably good and the only reason why i'm sharing it with everyone is because i want everyone to make it and i want to go to parties where it's there i want to go to like restaurants and see it in the restaurant i want to see it everywhere i want it to just be banana cream pie all day all the time 24 7 holiday parties bar mitzvahs birthday parties you know new year parties i want to see it thrown in people's faces 
it is so good so easy like i this was one of the first things i ever baked and i and being a dummy that i am i didn't even mess it up so yeah this is the recipe make it if you want to get fancy like add a little bit add like add some cornflake to the top along with the walnuts it's pretty good but yeah this will this is like a this is a real winner um so pro tip about the baking part when you're baking it in the oven it says until golden brown the the crust will look kind of pale in the oven so i would say maybe about 10 minutes put it in for 10 minutes turn it around do it for another 10 minutes then pull it out and look at it because it'll start to darken once outside of the oven and it's not it if you wait until it gets golden brown in the oven as it's cooking, it might get burnt. So pull it out and look at it for a little bit and then let it cool down. Um, the other thing about the butter when you have to like mix it into the flour is that make sure it's mixed in pretty well. It doesn't have to be perfectly like blended, but you don't want there to be like random flour bits all around. As for the cream cheese and the milk and the vanilla pudding, the vanilla pudding that you should be looking for is the one that requires milk to make it. There are three different types of vanilla. There are three different ways you can make pudding, like from the Jello box pudding. There's one where it's just add water. There's one where you have to actually cook it. Don't do that one because that one takes too long. There's one where you add milk and it doesn't need to be cooked. Get the one where you just add milk, and so you add milk to it and you make the vanilla pudding basically, and you mix in the cream cheese until it's like a smooth consistency. It'll get chunky when you add in the when you add in the cream cheese as well. The other thing is um, the bananas. You want to make sure those are like ripe. Don't get like raw bananas. You want to make sure they're soft so that when you bite into the pie, bite into the pie, it's sweet and it's also soft. And yeah, that's that's those are all my tips on how to make a perfect banana cream pie. And seriously, like if you guys make it, send me a picture. I would love to see your guys' banana cream pie. I would love to taste it too. <clears throat> and with the holidays coming up, it's super easy to make, super cheap. I mean, butter is like what four dollars. Sugar and flour, like on that, you might have to buy that if you don't have it. Cream cheese is another like three dollars, so that's like seven dollars. But now two boxes of instant pudding is about maybe like four dollars total, so that's like eleven. The bananas are probably like two dollars, so that's thirteen. The milk might be the most expensive because you have to buy like a carton or something. So that's like another four. That's like 17. And the co-op is another four. So that's like 21. But yeah. Um, is there a substitute for an electric mixer? I don't have that. You can do 